Hello there. Hello, Mr. Kavala. Baba, Yenden Kavala. And welcome to a fresh edition of I Hate Sundays. Hello, Mr. Kavala. Baba, Yenden Kavala. It's starting today on a Saturday, and it's not just any Saturday, it's also Easter Saturday, and it's also April 20th, which means it's Adolf Hitler's birthday. It feels like a perfect night to dress up like Hitler. Uh -uh. Oh, this is the 75th Sunday, and we got a lot going on. First off, we're going to the Rip and Dip sample sale. I think you guys know how obsessed I am with the Rip and Dip. Well, now there's a sample sale where everything's totally cheap, so there'll probably a bad, be a badass haul. Um, then we will go to the Aris, to the Acro Cats performance. It's cats performing tricks and playing with a band. That's happening. And then later on, we'll be watching Chris Stuckman's movie, Notes from Melanie at the Chinese Theater. A lot going on today. Let's see where the day takes us. First up, the sample sale. My name is Billy and I'm freaking out. I thought that more I was, well, I can't really figure it out. I sit alone with my thoughts and prayers. Dream out my memories as if I was never there. standing in front of the Rip and Dip sample sale and it is pretty much the longest line I have ever seen in my life. It goes down this block, around the other block, and then around the other half of that block. It's too sad. We can't make the Rip and Dip sample sale now since we still want to see the performance with the cat. What are we going to do? <laughs> So, yes, we've arrived here at the El Portal Theater. Here we will see the Astro Cats perform. Cats jumping through hoops and stuff. This cat situation is getting more promising and promising by the minute. Ooh, there's actually stuff. I think that's one of the performers tonight. I was wrong, those cats are not performers. They're actually up for adoption. You can get a cat here for like, there's three cats here and you can get them for 20 bucks. Which is actually really sweet. You go to the show and you can get yourself a cat. I love this song. <laughs> <laughs> 
one of my favorites. So, even though this cat show was very cute and fun and nice and all that stuff, it wasn't as spectacular as you'd imagine it. They just do like these little tricks. And even though these cats are trained, they don't feel like anything extra like out of out of the ordinary. They're still regular cats and act like regular cats. But it is, if you like cats, you're going to enjoy this very much. It is a very cute and sweet show. I think they'll also be in San Francisco, Santa Barbara, and Seattle in the next couple of weeks. Like, I'll put a link in the description. And if you want to see the Acro Cats do something, you should check them out in your city. Up next, we're checking out Chris Stuckman's movie. So I'm standing in front of the iconic Chinese theater. And this is the moment where we talk about Chris Stuckman. Chris Tuckman is a very well-known film critic, maybe the most well-known on YouTube. Hell, we even reference him in our trailer. In a world where every YouTube film critic is trying to be just like Chris Stuckman gets Stuckmanized, comes a channel with the balls to try something completely different. And why is everybody trying to be Chris Tuckman? I don't even mean that in a negative way at all. Um, it's just that he pretty much provided a blueprint um, of how people should review movies. You know, start with the background information to the film, go off with your positives, keep going with your negatives, make a summary, give it a grade, closing words. That's pretty much the blueprint Chris Stuckman has provided us over the years. And um, when I found out that he was making a film, I got very fascinated because at this point I am making a film, I made a film myself. And it's really cool that it's going to be screened tonight here, which will give me the opportunity to be one of the first people on YouTube to review his movie. So I'm looking very much forward to that. So let's go see Chris Tuckman's movie. And, but before that, let's play some games at Dave and Buster's. Okay. Ah! This is the situation before the screening of Nose for Melanie. It's quite hip. People are red carpeting. People are running around. I'm a little bit too lazy for the red carpet. I did that the day before yesterday. Um, I'm just really here to check out Chris Stockman's movie. So yeah, I just saw Notes from Melanie. Let's go home and review this. On April 20th, the film is going to be shown at the Hollywood Comedy Shorts Festival. Now, this is special for a lot of reasons. For one, I got the movie to California. That was something I really wanted to do. And for two, it's going to be shown at the TCL Chinese Theater, the iconic theater on Hollywood Boulevard. A note from Melanie is directed and written by Chris Stuckman and stars Mason Heidegger and Kate. Lynn Newberry. And I was actually very surprised by this film because I wasn't really expecting anything at all. Um, but generally this is a very simple little story that just takes place in one single room and is generally consists of just one conversation between two people. So it's generally about the screenwriter who has been writing these bad let's say asylum-like knockoffs of big movies 
and just finished his first serious script and is looking for some advice from his more successful friend, Melanie. And uh, there is a lot of like humor and also a lot of realism because these characters, they are very fleshed out. They are very well written, which is something that I truly appreciated about this. One of the things I will heard all of my life about good writing is know your characters in and out. Know exactly what they would do in what kind of situation. And I think um, Mr. Stuckman here pretty much nailed that really well. He knows his characters. He knows exactly what words they should use and what phrases, how their facial expressions would be and how they would react in every situation. He knows these characters inside out. And that's why the story flows really well. And even though this is a 19 minute film, it feels more like five to six minutes because it's really fun. The di it's really fun seeing the dynamic the two characters have with each other. And that's pretty much what makes this whole entire thing happen. Actually really creative and cool. Um, it is also like very noticeable that a big love for film made this project happen. And this is pretty much like a love letter from a filmmaker who is in love with movies to other people who are just as in love with movies as he is. What I do have to criticize a bit is when we actually take a look at the films that this, let's say, unsuccessful writer has made in his life, there's actually like clips of these certain movies. And even though they are funny, they somehow take you out of the sincerity of the film. It is. These films are portrayed as so ridiculous that you're not really buying them. You don't really feel like this dude really actually made these totally silly superhero and dinosaur movies. It's just like so overblown with bad CGI. And I know this is purposeful. And I just thought maybe it would have been... Um, more sincere and more real to the character if these bad movies had like the so bad it's good style of let's say a Tommy Wiseau movie or a Neil Breen film. That would have gotten a lot more laughs other than these forced um, blockbuster CGI gimmicks that they were trying to put into the films that this character created. But generally that was my only problem, except maybe in the short there are things listed, like how many awards a certain movie won, in what year a certain movie came out, and what budget it made back. And it was like, um, at some point you feel, dude, we know your characters love film, you have to stop shoving it down our throat, but that is, I think, um, somehow really the only thing I had a problem with here, and this is me criticizing something on a very high level, and it's like complaining about one single raisin in a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> so this was actually very entertaining, very well written, and uh, I really hope Chris Duckman actually goes out and makes a feature one day because if he's making good shorts like this, I would really like to see him make a feature film. I'm gonna give Notes from Melanie a B. And by the way, it just turned Sunday. Thank you guys. Ah, this was made me a little nervous reviewing something from um, maybe the most highest appreciated colleague on this platform. So um, who's, uh, whoever is watching this, please don't kill me. I've tried to give this my best review I could. Um, I also really enjoy the color palette here, or like they sit in this blue room and a lot of vibrant, beautiful colors. And yeah. So guys, 
If you like this, please like the video. If you don't like it, don't like it. And if you want more of this, you can click right here and enter the void. So, good morning to this fateful Easter Sunday. What does one do on Easter Sunday? Well, of course, one goes to a brunch. No Easter is complete without a brunch. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. It's one of those situations where they have bottomless Bloody Marys and mimosas. Which I think I'm going to be the reason why they will stop serving bottomless mimosas and Bloody Marys in LA altogether. And I'm gonna prove that to you guys why. <laughs> okay, here we are. Mimosa one, Bloody Mary two. One. <laughs> now I got these bunny ears, y'all. Oh, by the way, it's really nice here. And this, my friends, is mimosa number three. I think I missed recording number four. Well, anyway, this is mimosa number five. It's number six, just waiting for me. Number six. Is this number six or number seven? I'm not sure. I think I got fatter between videos. Look at my cheeks, they're so fat. I ate too much. Number six, right? Let's say number six. Oh god, look at me, I'm so fat. Ah. Okay, this is how far we took it. Mimosa number eight. It's a cheesecake. And this is mimosa number nine. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Voiders congratulate me because I did something that some people think is impossible. Ten mimosas in a jar in the bottomless mimosa. In the Bloody Mary. Yeah. Oh, this is the beautiful scenery at La Cantina. Oh no, there's a lot less yeah. fish in there than oh, usually. So after 10 mimosas, one Bloody Mary, and a whole bottle of champagne, it is time to throw Frenchie's birthday party. How do you like my look? Marcel is already in action, making everything happen. Marcel, <laughs> how do you feel? Metal <laughs> Kübelchen. So it's 7 p.m. and everybody's late. Except for Kwame. Yeah. And the birthday girl is in the house! Everyone is late. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Happy birthday, Frenchster! Woo! It's your birthday! It's your birthday! So. I know, I can tell. Ivan and Christina light 37 What's cigarettes. What's the epic? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Carmen Carmelo. <laughs> it's getting a bit cold, so we are moving downstairs to screen our movie and the making of of our movie. Okay, guys, I just left the party that was going on in my own house for one specific reason. And I'm going to show you right away. <laughs> oh no, I might be too late. No, no Mortal Kombat 11 tonight. We just came a minute too late and then can't get it anymore. They're such assholes. It is so close, yet so far away. <laughs> so we're watching the making of, of our movie in the basement. The theater. So far, everybody's being very serious and focused. Including me. Which is weird. What? But we got this. Including me, which is weird. I'm glad we finally got to work on something that's going to come up. Okay. After the bunny thing. Yeah. You played my. <laughs> got the drug! Got the school! Got the school! To be a liar or a doctor! Da -da 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 -da. Don't give a fuck about your life! Fuck it up! Yeah! Why is the 
potential every day, that's how I roll. You don't even look at me, cause I'm a motherfucking troll. You don't care, you don't see me. I don't give a fuck living life, that's how we be.